We gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. This is your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official, outstanding, motivational Miss Jamaica's in the building. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad, all gone. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. We're even on YouTube if you want to see all our visuals. And on threads. Y'all haven't gotten on threads yet? Y'all need to go ahead and get on because we'll be dropping all them quotes. We'll be dropping our videos on there, our clips on there. Very motivational. But definitely sign up for our YouTube membership. That's where you see all of our exclusive content way before he started clipping any of it. So thank you in advance. Man, hey man, this guy here today don't need no introduction. This guy is uh, known if you've been out to uh, Los Angeles, California, and you've been on over to Culver City, man, you can find him over at Jenga Derrick's, man. This guy's a restaurant owner, business owner. Um, this guy also has now opened a ghost kitchen here in Addison, Texas, man, and we're so happy to have him today, man. Jenga Derrick's is in the building, man. My friend, Derrick, what's going on, man? Um, it's all great. It's all great. All great, man. I just um, you know, wanted to bring you on the show, man. We we came by your kitchen, uh, and and we had a great time. You know, um, the food was all as always superb. Ever since the day we met you, you gave us great food, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, man, we want to talk about that a little bit. But I know Miss Jamaica, she probably want to take it a different route for you. So I'm going to hand it over to Miss Jamaica for a second. Yeah, because, you know, all our listeners know I like to dig deep into your background. Um, see why you even started cooking. So tell me about yourself first. I know you're born and raised in Jamaica. What part of Jamaica? I'm in St. Anne. Do you know that in God created heaven and earth mm -hmm. in six days? Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, you want to rest. Mm -hmm. There was no place. So I created Jamaica and you rested in St. Anne. <laughs> okay. So um, raised with your parents? Yes. Same household? Same household. Same household. Because a lot of people who sit right here, they're always, you know, split parent. Um, you always have one father over here, but they're, you know, born and raised with their mom. You usually don't see them in the same household. But how many um, siblings do you have? Uh, well, I used to have four. One passed away. Boys and girls? Um, two boys, two girls. Are you the oldest? No, the second. Second one? But the oldest boy. Oldest boy? Yes. So you were the protector? Still I am. <laughs> so, what was it like growing up in St. Anne um, with your family? Which Tell people, because people don't know about St. Anne. People, when they think about Jamaica, they think about Kingston, and they think about Ocho Rios, Montego Bay. Tell us about St. Anne. Well, Ocho Rios is in St. Anne, if you've ever been to Ocho Rios on the North Coast. Well, St. Anne is a big, is the biggest parish in Jamaica. Mm. And um, just to give you the rundown, that's where Bob Marley, Bella Fante, and Marcus Garvey, and Derek is from. Wow, mm. that's big right there. Man, you, you, that's one of the things we hear so often when somebody comes on here, it don't matter who they are, what walk of life they're from, they all lift up Bob Marley, man. Mm -hmm. That's something that I've seen ever since we've started this show. Well, you know, he, he got a lot of words of wisdom. So he listen to his song. It's, it's, it's talking to you. Wow. Tell us something about um, Bob Marley that maybe a lot of people in um, the public eye may not know that, you know, Jamaicans normally know about. Well, um, I met Bob in person. Mm -hmm. He used to have a, a record shop on Beeston Street and King Street. Mm -hmm. So we used to walk by and... And that's in Kingston. In Kingston. Mm -hmm. I walked by and he was standing by the door. And, mm -hmm. Hey, Bob. At that time... How old was he at that time? Oh, young. Bob was young. He mm. got a 36, so he right. was pretty young. Okay. Um, so he's, he was just a regular person. Mm -hmm. and then he Never was, acted like a celebrity. Never, never, never. never. Mm. And then he blew up. Mm-hmm. And um, um, so I'll, after that, I wanted to see him on the screen and buy his records. And in fact, I went home maybe six years ago and I went to his gravesite. Mm -hmm. And... It's great. Mm. Wow. So when you think about Bob Marley, um, when you were seeing him back then and to see him blow up like he did, uh, as far as, you know, his status uh, throughout, um, what did you think about that? Just seeing that from your own, from seeing him from not being who he ended up being, you know, just how did that, how did that affect you as far as how you thought about it? Um, 
only th- I never really affect me. I just see where if you have a talent for something and you work hard towards it, you start from something small to where it grow bigger. That is possible. And that's possible. Wow. So, um, who in your family was the cook? Was it your mom or dad? Well, both. Uh, my, we love when our dad cook because you know you get more protein and oh, he loved the meat. He loved the meat, so you get more meat. Mm-hmm. And on Thursday, he would do something very legal in my house. Um, we grew up Adventist. Uh huh. My dad is not a church person. Okay. So you'd cook some pork on Thursday. Mm. So you'd have us eat it before mom come home. I was about to say, what did mom say? So she oh, didn't. No. She never knew. We couldn't talk about it. So she never knew that that's what he did. And maybe she did after a while, but she never said anything. <laughs> you know, but um, <laughs> that was sneaking me out mom's back. So how did mom cook? What did she cook? You know, what, what was your favorite dish that um, mom cooked? Rice and peas and chicken, um, brown stew chicken. What was your favorite dish that dad cooked? Uh, the, the Other than the pork. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the pork. Nah, we could do a good curry chicken. Okay. But we didn't look forward to the curry chicken. We wanted the pork. Mm. It's because you guys weren't because supposed to be ride. eating it. Man, I just, um, like I said, um, you know, being that you you were in California when you first opened your first restaurant. I want to get into that. Like, um, what drove you to opening your first location? Where was it at? Uh, what year was that? Um, I actually started on Juneteenth. Mm. Um, we, we used to live close in Pomona, close to um, Pomona Fairgrounds. Mm-hmm. And I like to cook. I grew up cooking. And I started cooking some chicken and some roast fish. But I was roasting um, trout. Mm. And everybody was, oh, this is so good. We never had it like this. You got to open a restaurant. You got to open a restaurant. So I had a regular job. I'm an engineer by profession. Mm-hmm. And Making a lot of money. I made a dollar or two. <laughs> <laughs> and I started going to events, festivals, and jazz festival, reggae festivals. And people start having my food more. So it encouraged me to. Oh, so you were cooking and giving and doing your food at these festivals? Yes. Okay. Selling. 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 Yeah. Okay. And that, at that time, you didn't have a restaurant or no, nothing no, yet? No, 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 no. Okay. Just, and um, because I'm Adventist, we grew up on pretty much natural food. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> so I just, use, I just used those recipe and use the natural herbs and spices to do my stuff, as most Jamaicans do. Right. And. Um, then I started doing bigger festivals, the Bob Marley Festival, of course, and um, we did a, a big sh- job for um, the Democratic Convention in LA. With, uh, that was my biggest catering then. And that was even still before a restaurant? Right before a restaurant. Wow. And, um, and that was only because they loved your food? It wasn't even because, people think, always say it's networking. Was it because of somebody you knew? It was networking. Okay, um, okay. It was the mayor of Los Angeles that did a thing for his children, Children Corner and at the zoo, mm-hmm. and he recommended me. Okay. That's what I did. Okay. And I went and did a really good job. Mm-hmm. And at that point I realized, oh, I make more money. I, I actually make one half of my salary just doing that one job mm. for the year. Wow. And you enjoyed it more? Oh, I enjoyed it, yes. Mm. And I decided, um, I'm leaving. Mm. And I was encouraged that restaurants fail, you got to come back, and but my head was, wow. So I... What year was this? This was 1992. Wow, 92. Mm-hmm. And I opened my first restaurant in a city of commerce. It was a food court. And um, it just blew everybody away that I came on the scene, and my lines were so long. Um, because everybody already knew you. Well, yes, a lot of people knew me, mm-hmm. but then the food, and you could smell the aroma and mm-hmm. all the stuff, you know. And you were the only one in that neighborhood that had a, um, a Jamaican restaurant. Jamaican restaurant, yes. Okay. So um, my contract was five years, and I said, I can't stay here. Because it was limited to lunch only. Oh, really? Yes. Mm. A big, it's commerce, mm-hmm. a lot of um, industries. So then I look for the new one. That's the one where I met you guys. Okay. And open that one up. And it become 
a spot in LA where it's under, if you go on the map, that will say, oh, I'm going here, say, oh, go by Derek's and you go there. You know? mm -hmm. How long was that one there for? 18 and a half years. 18 and a half years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, okay. Now you know that you're, you, you know, how many um, people have you seen and influenced because when you first started, it wasn't a lot of Jamaican restaurants out there. No, no, no. But how many did you see start popping up after your success? Oh, a lot. There's a lot of restaurants in LA, but we were, um, we, are the, we were the one, two, maybe they had three um, sit-down restaurants. We were the only one with a full liquor license. Mm. Oh, okay. Why is that so? Is it, is it hard to get a liquor license out there? Oh yes, mm. um, it's very hard and it's expensive. It's very expensive. It's like a hundred thousand dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. A year, or is no, this that one time? No, that's initial payment for the license. Okay. And once you're selected, mm -hmm. and then in a year, the basis you pay like I think six thousand dollars to pay. Mm. Wow, you um, been in here in Texas now uh, for about seven, eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years, um, definitely love when you have the cooks, cookouts, you know, over at your house. I've enjoyed coming over there eating those meals, man. Um, but just um, when you, when you, I, I remember talking to you one day and I was like, man, I'm going to get you on this show. I was going to get you on this, uh, 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 this cooking show. This, well, not just cooking show, just business owner show, right? Mm -hmm. And I introduced you to... Breakfast Brothers. Breakfast Brothers. Yes. Rick. Wasn't that Rick? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and you went on that show. How was that experience for you? Like, like, how was it just, you know, talking to him, him being a restaurant owner, you being a restaurant owner, and then just, you know, talking about the foods and stuff. How was that? That was great. Um, it kind of pushed me because there was a bunch of different um, restaurant owners when I went that day. So um, I've been procrastinating about they put in a place in, in Texas. And just when I was about to start, then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So I had to push it off. And um, I was so hands on in LA, because we really the big catering jobs. I got to be on site to make sure it done how I wanted to do. And um, <clears throat> I decided to start something here in, in Texas. So I came, I came out and I looking around after COVID and I decided to, um, to do um, the ghost kitchen because it was more manageable. Um, we could do catering from there. There was a lot of people to deal with and the staffing problem going on in the restaurant industry right now is very, very bad. So wait a minute, you telling me the reason you done it the way you done it is because of the way the staffing is and just be dealing with, um, you know, the way that I guess the industry is right now, you decided that you would do a ghost kitchen in Texas because of staffing. Yeah, well, the ghost kitchen, the ghost kitchen, um, is 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 one of the futuristic thing about the trend that's going on. Okay, um, a lot of people not going out. You still have a COVID shadow hanging over your head, so people don't want to be in a lot of crowd, and. A lot of young people don't want to just order the food that comes into them and keep it moving. Yeah, but I want to go back to that day when you was eat, when you was with Rick and y'all. We were over there and you was doing the the uh, uh, show with him, the TV show. Mm -hmm. um, he ate your food and he stopped I, and he said, "Man, I ain't never taste." What did he eat? That um, he, he had the jerk chicken on the jerk pork. In the jerk pork, and he stopped, and, and he's like, "Man, I'm not kidding, you know." Basically. That was iconic for me, like, yeah, like to have another chef do that. Yeah. So, how did that make you feel to see him uh, react that way to the food? Um, it let me feel good. It take me back to where you asked a question about Bob Marley. Yeah. It took me back to where oh, I started stuff from ground up, and I was never a chef. I incorporate what I learned at home. And I started going out to Las Vegas to different catering events to learn, you know, high end catering. And when he stopped and said what he was doing uh, there as the host of the show, I was like, oh, I better get my ball rolling right now. 
I think that was, I, I thought that was great, man. Just to see you in your element and him in his, man. I thought that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. and shout out to him at Breakfast Brothers over there. Um, definitely want to shout him out and just the love that he showed uh, my friend, yes, Derek. Man. You know, peace, and Lincoln, peace and love to you and the new baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he do got the new baby. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. Man, so... Um, just moving on, man. Like, what what can we expect? What what types of foods can we expect uh, coming from the Ghost Kitchen here, uh, out of Addison? Well, out of Addison, we're doing a couple of things. Um, we have like a not a complete menu like what's in Los Angeles, and it may come up to that. But we have um, jerk chicken, curry chicken. We have three different pastas: uh, shrimp pasta, jerk chicken pasta, um, uh, and a salmon pasta. We have um, grilled salmon, it's a blackened garlic salmon. Um, we have jerk pork, and it's all meat, no bones, tender. Mm -hmm. um, and you have curry goat? Curry goat. Uh, we have a vegetarian dish, um, and we use fresh products. Like if you ever had my kale, mm -hmm. you know. which everybody talks about. Everybody going crazy. I just got a call. I just got this. Just came in from Mount Vestas, who came and got a a plate today. He just left. He says, uh, "This is the <laughs> best jerk chicken. This is the best jerk chicken ever. The beans and rice are amazing. Thank you guys so much for the invitation once again and the food, man. Great. So, how does it feel when people come and eat your food and then you get those type of responses? It feels like when you. Like in your show, when you go on the internet and you see the chart moving up. Yeah, yeah. All That's right, all good. right. Now then, it feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know you had some reservations about opening the location here in Dallas. How do you feel now? I have overcome a big obstacle, and the obstacle was um, freeing up myself from LA. I got a good staff in Los Angeles. They do a good job, so I let them do what they do over there. I want to talk about that now that you said that. I want to talk about the how when you came into Culver City, mm -hmm. where your restaurant is in L.A., um, just the layout of it, and just what made you choose that location. About a thing. Uh, and I kind of heard you allude to it before, but just let's talk about you going in the process of moving from a place you've been at for 18 and a half years and then moving over to Culver City like that. That had to be big. The transition. Just let's talk about it. And some bit. of the obstacles that you had there and how you overcame it. Yeah. Wow. Folks talk something else out of you like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he don't know. The, the interview process is totally different than just sitting back watching the show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Culver City was different. I, to be honest with you, um, I've been doing Culver City forever. I've been living in Los Angeles for a long time. Well, um, my wife took me, one night we went to the movie, and it was like 12 o'clock at night, and she said, oh, I'm going to take you someplace. So she took me to a place called Father's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. It was 12 something. At night? At night. Ooh. And the place was packed. Mm. You have a line going in there. And when I got to the door, the guy gave us a menu. I said, find yourself a seat. I'm like, huh? That's strange. Yeah. So we got inside here. There's no vacancy. And I'm looking around. I found a space for two. And I went and held a spot. She went to the bar and ordered, ordered us a beer, and, and um, we had some, I think it was a lamb leg or something like that. Well, I'm like, wow, at 12 o'clock at night, it's popping like this? So the next, the Monday, I went back over there, looking for a space. And the space that I now have, I saw that there was two restaurants, and the, the center was left undone, and I asked, and they said, yes, it's, um, it's available. available. So I called the owner, and um, when I called him up, um, I said, I'm interested, and I said, um, tell him who I am and things like that. So he said, okay, we'll get back with me. So the Thursday, that was the Monday, the Thursday I'm in the restaurant sitting and I'm about to go home, and two guys walk through the door, and that's me. I greet them, how are you doing? Welcome to Derek, how are you doing today? And that wasn't even your place? No, yeah, that was his oh, first place. Oh, oh the first, first place. place, yeah. 
And I said, fine, come to, I have something to eat. But they were different to me. There was just something about them that was different. So I went over and I had a, kind of, um, started off with a cold red striped beer. And the guy said, absolutely, yes. And started a conversation and they were just straight and what they wanted and stuff, look at my menu. <clears throat> but I spent a little too much time looking at the menu. Mm. And then they introduced himself. Oh, we are the owner for the restaurant space over there. So we come come to check you out. I said, hmm, well, you know, this is what I have. And I would bring life to that spot of, of over there. And we sit down and we start talking. And he said, I know about you. You have all those sausage plates at, at the Coliseum. I said, yeah. I said, oh, we know you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so I never use a realtor. They with us. Set the deal. Got it. It was wow. dirt inside, built walls with dirt. So I built that out, what you, saw, what you see there. Wow. And <clears throat> we are the only full service black owned restaurant in Culver City up until today. Wow, mm. and that area is so busy. So energetic, there's a lot of life in that area. Well, in front of us, is the Amazon Studios. Amazon Studio. Studios. Uh, well, the main office is in front, and then behind that is our Culver Studio, Amazon Studio. Um, to the left of us is Apple. Then you have HBO. Then you have Sony Studio. Um, a lot of high tech companies over there. So it's a very, it's, it's popping, you know, it's, and the way they design the city, you just have to walk. It's easier to walk than to drive. Wow. But it doesn't sound like you ran into any um, road bumps. Uh, yes, I ran into a few. Um, Tell me about one. Um, Culver City is a hard city. <laughs> in what way? Um, you know, in, in LA, period, um, putting up a restaurant, it's a lot of oops you gotta jump through because of the, new, the, the laws with, um, there. I uh, run in one, we are building a ramp for the wheelchair and there was an uh, electrical box there and it's stopped my project for six months mm. to get it approved. And finally I had to make a call and I made that call and they sent somebody over and said, oh, this is not operating now, but don't block it up. So I said, no problem, I'll work around it and have it. Okay. But uh, apart from that, the, the, the city worked with me to get everything through as fast as I could. That's good. Wow. That's good. I just, like I said, um, you know, when you think about just great food, great restaurants, man, over the years that we've been knowing you, man, the food has just always been just all the way, you know, tier 10, you know, top of the line. So thank you for always providing that service for us, man. Um, just like, do you, you, you're not cooking oxtails down here? Not yet. Special order. Special order, so it is okay. open. It is okay. open. It can okay. happen, it can happen. Yeah. It's all. But then also, I want you to elaborate on some of the big, since you've had that restaurant over there, tell me about some of the big about catering City? jobs that we you do. have had. Oh, we do a lot of catering jobs over there. We do, um, it's real, I never do that party twice. Mm -hmm. So you did, wait a minute. You say you did Rihanna's party. How do a person get to do Rihanna's party? Yeah, I, how, well, you was recommended. I can promise you that. Like, how did you end up even getting that? Is Making it, that happen? Um, honestly, um, to today, we don't know. You got a call, and they said, we have a client who is interested in using it to the uh, birthday party. Wow. And, and you didn't even know who the client didn't was. Didn't know who the client was. And then, um, what is big, um, um, this big company that um, do all music stuff. Uh, uh, um, where you buy tickets from? They control the. the like Ticket Masters? Big, Time just, Warner? No, 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 no. I don't remember right now. It, it'll come okay. To so, uh, the guy, um, his name is Jay Brown, mm -hmm. and 
I took that job. I went to Valera and talked to me. I said, well, Rihanna wanted to do a party. Oh, he told you that? And yeah, he told me that. And he was like, the location is secret, and you cannot see this to anyone. Really? Yeah. So if you ever see the movie with um, Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, Bodyguard? Bodyguard. You see that house where it was? That's where it is. That's oh. where the party was. That's at. where the party was. Really? Yes. Wow. Um, it's the biggest house I've ever been into. The swimming pool was like a, a mini ocean. Hmm. Wow. So we did a party there twice. It's on the internet. You can see us on there. Well, did, did you have any, once you found out who it was for, did you feel any pressure? You know, I pressure myself to, to, to achieve the best at all time. So um, we had one, two, three, four, four food locations. Uh, we had a lot of bars because all the liquors were donated to her. Mm-hmm. We had so much stuff going on. And, um, of course, it was our um, 23rd birthday. At that time, at right. At that time. Mm-hmm. And they had um, champagne. Mm-hmm. Very, very expensive champagne. What brand was it? I think it was Moit or something. But okay. Very expensive. And I had waiters carrying the, the bottles of champagne, 23 bottles mm-hmm. of champagne up. Lit with it and thing uh-huh. after her. And I mean, all the who is who musicians. Of course, was there. there. And then her bottle, um, I heard it cost $10,000. For her bottle of champagne. For her bottle of champagne that she, she got. Wow. And I taste a little bit and I make sure I didn't pee all night. <laughs> <laughs> so were you able to speak to her in person? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, um, she's she's really cool. We did a lot of her shoots for her um, events that she um, she does a lot of marketing behind the scenes stuff that people don't know. Okay. And so she would recommend us to come over to do our um, our shooting and stuff. Okay, that's awesome. And you know, um, we do. We used to have seventeen locations. We have a dairy, big turkey sausage and the Coliseum for all the games. Mm-hmm. Um, Why did you stop doing that? COVID. COVID. Mm. So, who are some who is somebody else that that sticks out to you when you cater uh, to them? I'll I'll do one more before we get out. Mm-hmm. Um, we we did the the Democratic Convention in in LA in Los Angeles. We do well. We, um, Tyler Perry when he was uh, okay when he was getting just the, recently yeah. Mm-hmm. So the Canadian embassy flew me back out there so we could set up a big party for him. So you just did this recently since COVID. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that was This like, is last year, right? No, no, it was like three months ago. Three months, yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. how was that event? Great. How did you even get that event? Recommendation again. <laughs> Recommendation, so you I, did. I mean, if, if you see the stuff we do, it's all over the internet. Yeah. And um, like I said, I, when I do something, I jump in to 110%. Wow, so how, uh, did you know that you was doing this for Tyler Perry when you, when you were doing this cater event? I didn't know that up front. You know, a lot of those stuff is not made public until mm-hmm. you get there and then you, you meet the O's and, you know. Because uh, of the privacy and the because of who it is. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes. Has there ever been a dish, like what would you say would be the most difficult dish you ever created? I mean, it's a difficult but even. Something out of your element, because I know you do a lot of um, Caribbean food, but I know you can cook anything. Oh, well, yes. We, um, what we do, we can take anything and bring a Caribbean flavor to it. Mm-hmm. Meaning herbs, spices, flavor. But that's all about food and right. all that stuff. I think um, a dish I created was um, green mussel. It was a seafood dish. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was um, green mussel and, um, and lobster that we made and seafood, you cannot overcook it. Mm-hmm. You can't undercook it. Mm-hmm. And I think that was very difficult because the crowd was a big crowd. So it went fine, everything was great, the taste was good and you know, like the green mussel, the half shell green mussels. Right, that's almost like oyster when people right. think You'd about it. You eat it with, like that. So oyster sauce was very tasty. Um, mild, not spicy. So everybody was like, what kind of sauce is this? But we just use the, 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 the shell of the thing to create mm-hmm. the sauce. And mm-hmm. that's where all the flavor is. Mm-hmm. You know? 
So a lot of things you create your own. Yes. I yeah, like I said, I I create flavors in my home. Mm -hmm. um, my jerk seasoning is all fresh herbs and spices that I grind up and and make. Can anybody buy your jerk seasoning? Um. We supply the LA Unified School District with a jerk sauce for the school lunches. Okay. Yeah. You need to do it out here because I know my kids tell me that some of these school lunches is not anything <laughs> to talk about at all. So you need to talk to Dallas DISD for them to, you know, put some spice to their food. Yeah, well, most of the, most of the food in the schools are, they come pre-cooked, marked, mm -hmm. and so all they got to do is eat it up. Uh, for the school lunches, mm -hmm. so they use my sauce to create a flavor for the kids. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's dope. Um, man, um, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to uh, reach out? What's the name of the restaurant? Uh, Django Derrick's again, but just give the location. The address, address everything. Yeah. Do you know oh, the wait, wait, Let me stop right quick. <coughs> let me let you guys in on something. Uh, Boss Talk 101, it will be in the kitchen with Jenga Derricks. Uh, you will see this coming through periodically. We will be showing you special dishes that he's preparing. Uh, it'll be a thing where you'll see it pop up randomly. I'm not going to give you a set time, but be on the lookout for that. Uh, Jenga Derricks, Boss Talk 101, we're going to be in that kitchen, man. It's going down, man. Now, let's go to... And how can people order? How can people order? Okay, so we are in... Um, we have 3230 Tower Wood Drive in um, Farmer's Branch. Mm -hmm. That's right next to Addison. Mm -hmm. So it's a ghost kitchen. So we are all over um, Rub Up, Uber Eat, um, DoorDash. Um, we're going to do a special um, meal prep. So if you are too busy, don't want to cook, you can call in and order your food and we'll prep the food. We have packages that we're going to send out so you can choose a package you want to have, so you can have a different meal every day. Um, you can come to Farmer's Ranch and you can place your order right in the, the, the kiosk, the kiosk right there. Mm -hmm. And um, we're gonna have a, a system we call Easy Catering. Mm -hmm. So you could call up, call us up, at Easy Catering, we take the order and they'll deliver the food to you. Okay. So and catering, um, uh, I'll give out uh, a new number we're going to use over there. Okay. You can call me personally and... An order. An order. Okay, that's all. Man, dope. thank you so much, man, for coming on the show, man. We love you for sure. We will be doing this periodically in the kitchen with Jenga Derrick's, man. Uh, you guys make sure you uh, get in touch with... Jenga Derricks, whether you in Culver City, in California, L.A., whether you in Addison slash a Farmer's Branch, uh, man, you got to taste this food, man. And if they Google Jenga um, by Derricks, number two, or Jenga by Derricks, will they see this location here in Dallas pop yes, up? Yes, it's supposed to pop up. You're going to have Dallas, you press Dallas, and it pops up. Okay, cool. So, y'all, if y'all want um, have any questions about anything at all, go ahead and comment below. And we'll get him to answer anything you have. Anything. And just remember now, our food is fresh and healthy. You stay wealthy, healthy. Wealthy, healthy, fresh and healthy. Man, hey, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.